So I finally make some decent, real progress on my CD listening backlog. I knock it down by about a third. And then I go on a thrift store crawl and undo that progress by, like, double. But hey, having too many CDs to listen to is not a bad thing. Right? Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comments section. I'd really appreciate it. So yes, today uh, I am going to give you another thrift store haul. I uh, did a, a circuit around all of the, uh, actually hit all seven of the uh, St. Vincent de Paul thrift stores in the Eugene Springfield area. Uh, yes, uh, I, I, said there, I said before that there are six. There is actually a seventh one. It opened probably about a year ago, but I was under the mistaken impression until a couple of months ago that they didn't have uh, music or video. Uh, I knew that they didn't, didn't have books. I just thought they didn't have all media. They have lots of, you know, big stuff like appliances and furniture, uh, but they don't have books. Uh, but they do, uh, contrary to what I thought, they do have uh, CDs and DVDs and Blu-rays. So I actually hit that store... Uh, about a month ago, and all the other stores I hit uh, over the course of three days um, last weekend. So yes, I was going to record this video last weekend. I got too tired and uh, too short on time, so uh, giving it to you a week late. Better late than never, right? So yes, I'm uh, going to obviously show you all the good stuff that I got. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to kind of preamble this with the system, an explanation of the system that I use. Uh, bear with me here. Uh, the stores do not allow bag check. They don't have the staff to provide reliable bag check at the front counters. You know, they have to leave the counters every now and then to do whatever. So there isn't always somebody there to man the bags that customers would leave. Uh, so they ask you not to bring any backpacks or large bags into the store. Well, I like to do my St. Vinny's crawls uh, on foot and on the bus. So I don't have a car parked outside to put a bag in. So I came up with this system. A clear bag. Hi there. Uh, yes, a clear bag which I got off of Amazon. This is, uh, where is the tag? Amazon Basics. So yeah, you can buy it on there. And so, yes, what I do is I have this clear bag, which I have over my shoulder. And inside of this bag, I have a bunch of um, see-through smaller bags. And I can close this up. this out. And zip ties. So yes, at the risk of uh, walking around town with a bag that has uh, plastic bags and zip ties in it, you know, I, I'm at the risk of people thinking I'm doing something nefarious. Um, but then I am, I'm trying to be transparent, <laughs> pun intended, by having this stuff in plain view, so I think I'm covered that way. Um, so yes, I use that system. When I'm finished at one store, I bag up my merchandise into this bag with the receipt inside, zip tie it closed, and then when I go on to the other store, my previous purchase is bagged up, sealed, and uh, the, the clerks had absolutely no problems. I had no nobody stopping me at the door saying, you can't come in here with that. So, so this is the system that works, apparently. So yeah, decided I would... Uh, Take a chance on that. I, I kind of came up with a system in my head uh, a few weeks before I did that. So uh, yeah. Uh, so yes, that system worked. I, I did uh, four of the St. Vinny stores on one day on last Saturday, and on Monday I did the other two or the yeah the other two. The one I think I just mentioned I did the one the the seventh one about a month ago. So I. I didn't need to do that at one again. Uh, it was too soon. Uh, so yes, I'm going to show you all the stuff. And I've got conflated in with my St. Vinny's purchases. I've got a few $1 CDs that I bought at a couple other places in the last few weeks in and around. Um, the uh, What used to be the $2 section at House of Records is now the $1 section. So there will be a few uh, in there. And I think one or two in, uh, from a couple of one or two other places, maybe? I don't know. But uh, another thing that I got on my perch my uh, crawl is this CD rack. 
So yes, it holds uh, it holds about a hundred CDs. Uh, it was fifteen dollars, you know, which is maybe a little much for a plain old wooden CD rack, but it is one of those nice solid wood CD racks, not one of those fake pathetic ones. Uh, so uh, yeah, I decided I didn't really I wasn't desperately in need of a new CD rack, but uh, this has proven to come in handy, as you can see here, and uh, since my my ever-growing CD listening backlog is um, occupying the rack that I usually use for my uh, Hold On CD collection videos, a couple more chapters are coming very soon, don't worry. Uh, yes, it's been two months, I know. Uh, I decided this would work perfectly for that until I've got my CD listening backlog knocked down and whatnot, and so anyway. Uh, so yes. Let's go ahead and take on the, uh, start showing you these CDs. I've got them kind of arranged by, uh, by genre and such, so uh, it, hopefully this will flow from one topic into another. Uh, I've got one, and I think this was the only one that I bought that was still sealed. Uh, the Jonas Brothers, Lines, Vines, and Trying Times. I had this one quite a while ago, and uh, I did pick up their new album, The Album, clever title. Um, and er, a couple months ago, and I really enjoyed it, and so I thought I would give this one uh, another try. I, as I said, I think I think I just said I had it in my collection a long time ago. Got rid of it um, when I just kind of lost interest in the Jonas Brothers. But I figure for one dollar, still sealed. Give it another shot. As I recall, of the original Jonas Brothers albums run, that was was my favorite. So, uh, <clears throat> and then this one is I think just about the only. Um, well, there are a couple other uh, blind or deaf purchases, stuff that I'm not sure if I'm going to like. Uh, and I thought I would pick this one up and give it a try. I believe they are pronounced Ms. Mister. It is a, uh, I think, a synth pop or synth wave uh, duo. And this is their album, Secondhand Rapture. Their, I think there's their major label debut, and I cannot read the copy. Oh, 2013 is when it came out. So... I figured, hey, what the heck, give something new a try. And uh, yeah, there's another couple of ones in here that I'm not familiar with. Thought I'd give them a try. Leona Ness, her uh, self-titled album. And oh, I just realized I have not recased these. Obviously, they're still in the crummy case. So I wanted to re wait to recase them until I did the video. I just realized it used to be, uh, it was a CD that came from Skips. So it's every once in a while at the, St. Vinny stores, I run into a CD that's got the old Skips price sticker on it, so Skips lives in some form or another. And then this one was a really cool find. Uh, I have not tried this guy out, and I've really wanted to. Michael Kiwanuka. I've heard good things about him, and I, I actually am not sure what genre he's in, if he's instrumental or if he's vocal or what. But I am pretty sure it's somewhere in the jazz or jazz-adjacent uh, field. So, yeah. And, uh, did I? Yes, I did my bargain bag video, so this will not be a spoiler alert. I rather kind of liked Mark Anthony's uh, album from last month's bar, or this current month's bargain bag, so picked up his uh, his subsequent English language album. I think there was a Spanish language album in between that one and this one. So, yeah. and then this was an interesting find. And uh, again, as I said, I have not recased these, and so apologies. The CD case is a little bit grimy, but uh, this is a an artist by the name of Frank, that's how it's pronounced, and uh, she is, I believe, lesbian, and so I thought I would give this one a try. She started out in the punk uh, genre, and this is a bit more in the pop vein, I believe. Uh, she, she was she was part of a group, and then she went solo as Frank, and so, yes, she dresses, or... I'm in my 50s, so I'm, this still some of this stuff is a little still a little bit fuzzy as to whether uh, she would be considered trans or what. Uh, but she kind of presents male. I don't know if, you know, she's not intending to present as a man. She is clearly a woman, I think. Uh, as far as I know, she is a woman. She's just a lesbian who appears, dresses, and puts her hair in masculine-ish fashion. So there you go. That was a clumsy way of talking about it, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, this one, this is actually an album that I've already uh, already owned, and I used to own this version of it, but got rid of it a long time ago. Um, my sister was into this group. I had lost interest in them, got rid of their CDs, but when I inherited my sister's collection, I got back into them. 
And so I finally was able to get my hands on the two-disc version of Five for Fighting's The Battle for Everything. So yes, the second disc has a couple of remixes and bonus tracks, as you can see there on the track listing. So it's got a holiday song and two B-sides and two uh, um, remixes or uh, variant versions of uh, songs on the album. So I do like uh, most of Five for Fighting stuff. I've got his first four albums. Uh, and then we have one that I have just, for some reason, have begun to collect her CDs. I'm not sure why. I mean, she's a good artist. It's not like I'm collecting garbage. Uh, Natalie Cole. Uh, she's There were a couple of them there, as you will see here. And so I just I decided, what the heck, pick them up. Uh, I do appreciate her voice and stuff. So then we have Matthew Sweet. I've got um, Girlfriend and 100% Fun. So I decided to pick up. I think this is the one in between those, uh, Altered Beast, or this might be the one before Girlfriend, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, and unfortunately I figured, I realized after the fact that the pre previous owner, sorry, this thing there, uh, put his initials in Sharpie on there, so I'm going to see, I don't know if I can get rid of Sharpie with uh, rubbing alcohol or not. I gotta make sure I don't use something that will uh, damage the CD, obviously even though it was one dollar, so it's not a big loss if I destroy the CD, but still, you know. Then we have, here's another, um, I should put this one right next to the Five for Fighting to kind of make it flow better, but uh, this is another uh, reissue album with a couple of bonus tracks, uh, one that I already had, uh, Indigo Girls, self-titled album. Uh, so yes, this is one, I actually didn't realize that they put this one out uh, like two years after its original issue, and it's got two bonus tracks, the uh, single mix of Land of Canaan and a live version of Center Stage. So, uh, yeah. Uh, always, I, I enjoy Indigo Girls. It was nice to kind of to find a uh, a bonus track uh, laden version of one of their albums. And also an another Indigo Girls uh, a live album here. Uh, actually, I guess it's more of a live EP because it's seven tracks uh, plus a studio version of uh, one of their uh, songs. So, yeah. Back on the Bus, y'all, is the name of this one. So, yes, always willing to give stuff a try, especially for $1 a piece. And then we have, uh, speaking of giving stuff a try, Don Williams, uh, a country artist. Uh, this is the, his, the Definitive Collection. I've got several CDs in this Definitive Collection series. And this has 25 tracks on it. So, yes, it's... Uh, Loaded up with uh, his hits. I am not familiar with Don Williams, so give him a try. And another artist I am not familiar with, and another CD in um, that I have several different uh, volumes of. Delbert McClinton, the 20th Century Masters edition, and I believe this guy is country also. He might be more... Oh yeah, track two is called Honky Tonkin. I guess I done me some. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is country. Uh, so yeah, give him a try as well. As I recall, I've heard some pretty good things about him. So, and as, as you are seeing here, we are definitely in the country section of my hall here. This is one I believe I got at House of Records. Uh, the Essential Chet Atkins, uh, the Columbia Years. So yes, this has, uh, I've got one of the albums that this takes tracks from. So, uh, but yeah, I thought I'd give it this one a try. Uh, yes, there are a couple of, actually three songs on here with Mark Knopfler, and I believe that's that's the album, or that's actually one of the albums that I have. He did an album with Mark Knopfler. It was very good. And so I think I've got actually two of uh, Chet Atkins' Columbia albums. Do I? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway. <laughs> I, I'm just kind of babbling at this point. Sorry. Then here's an artist that I am uh, very fond of and have been collecting their studio albums as I can find them. The Mavericks, uh, they are kind of a kind of a Tex-Mex uh, based country band. Uh, what a Crying Shame is this album. I'm only missing two or three of their studio albums now, actually. So, yes. Slowly filling all the gaps in that collection. And actually, let me take a sip of tea for a second here. <clears throat> so refreshing. Anyway, here's one that I have uh, listened to a couple of times. Actually, I had one of her CDs. I was first introduced to this artist with uh, one of her CDs was in one of my bargain bags, I believe. 
uh, Katie Oslin. She is a country artist, and this is her Greatest Hits album. So yes, I actually liked that one album that I got enough that I I upgraded to the vinyl edition when House of Records got the LP in. I picked it up. So yeah, this is the Greatest Hits from her RCA years, on which she did, I think, three albums she put out on RCA, maybe four. And then this one, this is kind of a bluegrass type of thing. Uh, it's a group called Strength in Numbers, and uh, as you can see, the third name down here is the reason I bought this one, Bela Fleck. I'm a fan of Bela Fleck and the Flecktones, a, uh, I call them a bluegrass band, kind of a blend of bluegrass and jazz. I like that stuff, so decided I'd give that one a try. And then now we've got a couple of compilations here. Um, actually, actually I'm reorder these just slightly so they flow a little better. Uh, a couple of jazz compilations I've got. Um, and <laughs> yes, as you can see, uh, these have not been recased yet, as I said. This one desperately needs a recasing because the entire uh, <laughs> corner of the front of the jewel case is gone off of this one. But the discs were totally fine, intact. But yes, classic jazz, the 80s. And this is a, uh, a release on the Time Life label. So... Uh, that one, and they also had the 90s volume, so, and that's, those are two decades that you don't really think a lot of when you think of jazz. Mostly when you think of jazz, you think of the 50s and 60s, the, the golden age, I guess you'd say, of jazz. So having stuff from the 80s and 90s, uh, I didn't take a really, really good look at the track listing, but uh, again, for these, these were like all these other ones, well, all except one in the set, were a dollar a piece, so for two discs, why not? And I've got a couple of other compilations here. Uh, this one, yeah, this, these, these next two, actually, I picked up at the House of Records dollar section. Uh, this is the best of Fania All-Stars, and this is a um, Latin music compilation uh, sung in Spanish. So, yeah, it was stuff that I, I was not familiar with, So and I actually listened to this the other day. Pretty entertaining, I've got to say. Um, not bad stuff, so... I do like, I have to be in the mood for it, but I do kind of like uh, Latin music every once in a while. So, yeah, I'm not sure if you guys will get anything out of the track listing, but I'd show it to you. And then <laughs> this one was really kind of cool. I was so glad I found this one and picked it up. Uh, this is actually a Rhino Records compilation, which, you know, as you guys probably know, Rhino always puts out really good compilations. This one is called Risque Rhythm, uh, Nasty 50s R&B. So yes, yeah, so some some stuff that's kind of kind of suggestive and maybe a little naughty, at least it was back in the fifties. So yes, and it's got some really really good artists on here. Um, give you a second to look at the track listing. You can uh, pause and freeze frame it, frame it if you like. But yes, uh, we've got uh, the first track is Big Ten Inch Record, which Aerosmith actually covered. So in case you were thinking that was an Aerosmith original, it was not. And then <laughs> track two is none other than Dinah Washington singing a song called Bing, Big Long Sliding Thing. It's about a trombone player that she's uh, got a thing for. It's, it's, yeah, so that, that's the, the double entendre in there. So, yes, some pretty fun... So it, it's, kind of, it's always fun to listen to what was considered risque back in the day, you know? So, so yeah. That one was lots of fun to listen to. I listened to that one already also. And uh, then we have, uh, moving on with the kind of jazz and R&B-ish stuff, we have the very best of the Impressions. This was a 50s and 60s R&B uh, quartet, and this again is a Rhino release. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gypsy Woman, I believe this that's a song that was, I believe, later covered by uh, Santana. And I'm trying to figure out if there were any other significant hits. Oh, People Get Ready, I think that was a good... Uh, a, a fairly popular hit with them. I don't know if that's the one that um, Marvin Gaye did or not. I'm, the memory is... I'm blanking on that right now. Anyway, then we have Lena Horn. Gotta love Lena Horn. And this is her album, Soul. It's got a lot of... Uh, I actually have not listened to this one yet. Yes, those last two, um, Que Pasa and Risque Rhythm, are... Just about the only two that I've listened to so far. So, uh, yes, I still have yet to listen to a lot of these. But uh, yeah, A Taste of Honey is on here. And uh, 
What the World Needs Now is Love, and Unchained Melody is also on here. So Lena Horne has a beautiful voice, so I am sure this will be a great album to listen to. Then we got another couple of uh, interesting compilations. The Ultimate Peggy Lee. So yes, Peggy Lee was a singer of Chanteuse back in the 60s. Might have been uh, as far back as the 50s. So yes, uh, Fever was her big, big hit. And what else? Oh, I'm a Woman. That was uh, a song, kind of a predecessor to uh, These Boots Were Made for Walking, the um, Nancy Sinatra song. And then uh, then we have a, a kind of a folkish uh, album. I've been curious about, you know, deep diving into these guys for a while. Uh, the Kingston Trio. And this is a two-disc set uh, found uh, for a dollar again. Everything in here was a dollar except for one. Uh, so yes, I figured I had had to give these guys a try. And then uh, throwing back to the uh, 40s, 40s and 50s, close harmony girl groups, the Maguire Sisters. Uh, very much enjoyed this one. Th this is actually, I think, the only other one in this whole set that I've listened to so far. So yes, lots of fun, kind of like the Andrews Sisters uh, in, in the same vein, but uh, they managed to sort of carve out their own little niche in uh, in that genre of music. And then we have good old Tony Bennett. Uh, yes, this one, you actually saw this one in my In Memoriam video last week. Uh, so, but yeah, I found this one at the one of the St. Vinny's stores. And interestingly enough, um, this song, Lyrics by Tony Bennett. I don't know uh, how common that was, if he uh, wrote the lyrics to a lot of his songs, or if this is the only song he wrote the lyrics to, I don't know. I tried to look it up online. Could not find a definitive answer. And then this one was one of the best finds of the entire uh, my entire crawl. That was fan uh, fantastic. A three-disc volume of Harry Belafonte's Greatest Hits. As you can see, it was $1.99, so a little bit more expensive. So, But actually, in a way, it was less expensive because it was if it's $1.99, it's less than a dollar per disc. So, uh, yes, um, it does not have a hole in the bucket on here, at least, at least not that I could see on the track listing. So it's missing that song, which I really enjoy. I get a kick out of. So, uh, but I, I actually enjoyed the live version of it more than the version that I had on the Harry Belafonte CD compilation I had before this. As soon as I got this one, I put the other one in a, uh, the sale, uh, trade-in stack, uh, so I will have to find that live album and uh, get that one, because that, that version of A Hole in the Bucket is lots of fun. Very funny song. And now, that is, I'm, I'm now halfway through my haul, so I figure every quarter... Mm -hmm. Take a dwinky-poo. And now we're on into the jazz uh, realm a little bit more. Uh, Candy Dolfer, I... There was a song, an instrumental jazz song that I had heard, and it you know you know when those songs just kind of pop into your head, even if you don't necessarily hear them on the radio, you just they just one of those little doors in your head opens up and that song comes playing through for some random reason. Anyway, had that song in my head, tried to figure out what it was from, and I finally uh, I finally figured it out, and it was by Candy Dolfer. It's the song Lily Was Here. It's a call and answer song with um, I know who it was, who it was on guitar. Now I can't remember who it was, but uh, Candy Dolfer is a saxophonist, and her duet partner on there was a guitarist, and it was a call and answer thing. Uh, when you hear the song, you you'll know it, you'll recognize it. But anyway, this is the album that it was on, and that when I heard it was like three months ago, so uh, I just kind of happened to happened to see the CD. There in the store. It's like, yay, I've got the CD. And then this artist was in a bargain bag months ago. It might have even been last year. Mindy Abair, she is also a jazz saxophonist. Uh, what I had in her, in the bargain bag was, I believe, her first album. And this is her second album. So grabbed it. Was happy to see that. And then this one, uh, when I see or when it looks like an album is mostly romantic ballads and stuff, I'm a little less excited about it, excited about it. But I've got enough of this artist's album so far that I decided to go ahead and pick it up. Uh, his name is Chris Boti. He is a jazz trumpeter, and so this is his album, "A Thousand Kisses Deep." I mean, the the album title 
implies that it's full of romantic ballads. I have no idea. It could have... Half of them could be upbeat numbers. I don't know. But anyway, decided to pick it up. And I thought there was a uh, one or two covers on here. Uh, oh, The Look of Love, which I think is, uh, I presume, is the Burt Bacharach song. Then here's, here's another um, more recent bargain bag uh, artist, Acoustic Alchemy. Uh, this is uh, the album Arcanum. And I believe this is the one right after uh, Against the Grain, which is the one that was in the bargain bag. Or it might be the one before. I can't remember. Anyway. I'm always happy to pick up a little bit more uh, of an artist that I like. Obviously. Then we have... This one is really interesting. Uh, this is one that I saw at House of Records. The group is called Bang on a Can. And uh, the hype sticker says, A fiercely aggressive group combining the power and punch of a rock band with the precision and clarity of a chamber ensemble. That is, I mean, if you know me enough, you know that music that cannot be boxed into a single genre is going to make me curious. So I had to pick this, pick this one up. I have not listened to it yet. So hopefully it lives up to the, uh, the hype on the hype sticker. <laughs> so, yeah. Now this one, I am uh, familiar with this artist. Uh, this was from back in uh, one of the first genres of music I really got into was New Age, back in the end of the 80s, the beginning of the 90s. And Narada was one of the labels that I really got into. And as was this artist, Ralph Illenberger. He is a guitarist, if memory serves. And uh, so I finally, you know, after I kind of moved out of my New Age phase and got into other stuff, I got rid of most of my New Age albums, but I've been reacquiring them lately, so I've got his album uh, Heart and Beat. I picked that one up on CD uh, a couple of years ago, I think, and then this was uh, the one either right before or right after that, Circle. So I was happy to see this one there at the uh, thrift store. And then uh, here we have another artist that I... I think I tried one of his albums out a while ago and wasn't terribly impressed, but I thought I'd give give him another try. Uh, Winton Marsalis. And this is Marsalis Standard Time, Volume 1. And especially, I figure when an artist does standards or covers, it's a good opportunity for me to get a good sampling of the artist and see if I like them. Kind of that, That's a way to get a foot in the door, I guess you'd say, into seeing if I really enjoy the artist. Makes them more accessible to me. If I try out a covers album first, that might seem contrary to logic or whatever, but why not give it a try? Then we have this one. I can't remember if this one was in my sister's collection. If it was, I don't see why I would have gotten rid of it. So I'm thinking it wasn't. But uh, Happy Anniversary, Charlie Brown. This is a compilation of uh, GRP. Uh, that's, a, that's a jazz label. GRP artists doing covers of songs that were made famous on the Charlie Brown specials. Like the, you know, well, like the Linus and Lucy theme and all those others. So uh, David Benoit, a class, a jazz pianist. B.B. King is on here. He does, of course, he does the song Joe Cool. What else would B.B. King do? Uh, Dave Grusin, Chick Corea, uh, Jerry Mulligan. Uh, Kenny G does the song Breadline Blues. It's kind of like, of all the artists to do a blues song, Kenny G? Anyway, uh, Dave Brubeck, Patty Austin, Lee Rittenauer. So, yeah, this is going to be fun to listen to. I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, then we have a couple of albums. Uh, you saw these in my In Memoriams uh, video. A couple of albums by a recently deceased uh, artist, a New Age solo pianist by the name of George Winston. This is his album, Forest. I'll pick that one up. And yeah, this one was actually available uh, in the House of Records dollar section, but the one there is really scratched up, so I was kind of happy to see this one at one of the St. Vinny's stores. The disc was nice and clean. And then we also have a compilation of his, uh, All the Seasons of George Winston, the best uh, highlight tracks from his Four Seasons albums. So that was... Uh, I very, was very happy to pick that up uh, ever since I heard that he passed away. I think I tried a George Winston album a while ago, a couple of years ago. Didn't think much of it. But, you know, now that he's passed away, I wanted to really give him another try. And then here's another artist that, uh, and, and again, this is a very dirty, scuffed up uh, CD case, so apologies for that. Another artist, I have a one-disc 
compilation that I, I enjoyed enough that uh, when I saw a two-disc compilation, decided to pick it up. Uh, James Galway, he is a flutist. Flutist or flautist? <laughs> well, you know what they say, flouted if you got it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> bad joke, sorry. Uh, a, a flutist, uh, he does classical stuff, he does easy listening stuff, and... Uh, uh, it's one, one disc leans more classical, the other, the other disc leans more easy listening. Uh, he actually does uh, My Heart Will Go On, the theme from Titanic, which, you know, mostly I've heard more than enough of that song. I heard it way too many times back in the day, but hey, anyway. Uh, I'm sure he does a pretty good uh, version of it. And El Condor, El Condor Pasa, the uh, Simon and Garfunkel song, at least that's who made it famous with Simon and Garfunkel. So, yeah, that's going to be fun to listen to. Now, this one, I don't know why I bought this, because it's an album that I have, uh, but the fact that it is still sealed, combined with the fact that it was one of the very, very first CDs I ever bought, to find a still sealed specimen of this is a big thing. So, I mean, I was thinking about giving this to a friend, but I recently gave him a two-disc John Williams compilation, so it would kind of be redundant for him to get this, except for the sentimental value. But anyway... Uh, by the re by request, the best of John Williams and the Boston Pops Orchestra uh, for a, a 10 to 15 yearish period from the 80s to the early 90s, he was the conductor of the Boston Pops. And so this is a was a CD that was made to so that he could find a, a kind of toot his own horn, I guess you'd say, and has a lot of his classic film themes and a couple of other things as well, a couple of, a couple of other comp compositions. Uh, his Olympic fanfare, which is very famous. And, and still used today, I believe, in the TV broadcasts of the Olympics. And uh, uh, the theme for NBC News, yes, he, he composed the music that you hear uh, when the NBC Nightly News comes on. So, uh, yeah. And this is a full three and a half, no, yeah, three minute, 20 second version of that theme. So, anyway, I'm not sure what I'll do with the CD. Maybe I'll give it to a friend at some point. Who knows? But anyway, uh, another John Williams and the Boston Pops uh, CD is Pops Around the World. This is overtures from uh, various parts, you know, ver various uh, nationalities and countries and stuff. And yes, this, you've got a little thing here. It's just, uh, and I don't know why I didn't just take this out and throw it away. But, uh, yeah. Just a little thing. Follow these simple directions for removal and handling of the compact disc. I think I've got that down. Thank you. Maybe it will be uh, curious for you. I will hold it up if you want to freeze, freeze frame and read it. Kind of cute. Anyway, it's going in the trash. I don't need pointers on how to handle compact discs. Thank you. I've got just a few. Anyway, uh, continuing on with the classic stuff. Uh, I kind of like Yo-Yo Ma, the classical cellist. Uh, not a huge fan, but I've got a few of his things. Uh, there is a holiday album out there that uh, if you saw my... I think I did my favorite holiday albums of the 2000s. It was in the top 10. Uh, but yeah, he's ever since that album, I've kind of liked, uh, been curious to listen to some of the, his other stuff. He did an album with Bobby, Bobby McFerrin, I believe, and that was fun. So yeah, one of his uh, greatest hits um, things. And he actually does uh, at least one composition by John Williams, which whom we just saw. So yeah. Mostly classical stuff, but some uh, other stuff, folk songs and uh, you know traditional stuff. And, stuff. and uh, another another compilation and another volume in the Twentieth Century Masters collection. It's a Perlman, a violinist. I I kind of like. I've I've seen performances of his every now and then, and I, I just I, I, there's something I just kind of like about him. I don't know, uh, but yes, this is uh, I believe. It's all classical pieces, yeah. Mozart, Vivaldi, etc. So, but again, for a buck, give them a try. And I also, it's also kind of a collector collector's thing. I've got quite a number of these 20th century master things, so kind of adding new volumes to my collection is kind of, you know. I don't know. Anyway, this is probably alongside what was the other one? Oh, the uh, Harry Belafonte. This is another one of my favorite. Uh, acquisitions from the thrift stores. Il Volo. This is the best of uh, 10 years. I had my eye on this when I saw it on Amazon, had thought a few times about buying it, 
but uh, lo and behold, somebody had donated it, donated it to the thrift store. It is not only a CD with some of the greatest hits, but also a DVD of uh, live performances. So, yeah, for one dollar. It's like, yeah. And these guys are, I originally found out about these guys uh, when they performed on American Idol. I think it was, I think it was season seven, the David versus David season, uh, and just kind of, kind of liked them ever since I've got two of their studio albums. So here we go. And we are three quarters of the way over. So, oh, this video is uh, half an hour long already. So we've only got a quarter of the haul left to do. So I hope you've been enjoying it, by the way. Uh, here we have another another three disc compilation. The only only the second three disc compilation, instrumental gold. This is one of those uh, um, various artist things. Well, I guess it's not a various artist. The London Pops Orchestra, conducted by Nelson Corbin. So yes, three discs, uh, hits of the fifties, sixties, and seventies, and I've got a few. Or actually, is this the only? No, I've got a couple other. I think I can't remember. Uh, three disc sets from this uh, reissue label, and look at where they're based in. Eugene, Oregon. Or they were. I don't think they exist anymore. But uh, yes, their address was a P.O. Box in Eugene, Oregon. So, kind of cool, huh? And then we have... Oh, now we're moving into the soundtracks. I've got uh, several soundtracks here that I found. First one is <laughs> The Andy Griffith Show. Th this was curious, so I thought I'd go ahead and pick it up. So, um... Yes, Songs, Themes, and Laughs from the Andy Griffith Show. Obviously, this was issued on vinyl way back in the day, so and I had no idea it was out, nor did I realize that somebody had issued, or that they had issued it, reissued it on CD. So yes, of course it has the Andy Griffith theme, and uh, the fish and hole, Ain't Me, uh, Flop-Eared Mule, Sourwood Mountain, Barney's Hoedown, and the Mayberry March. And that's that's not all the tracks. There are a few others. I figured that would be very, very curious and fun to listen to. And every once in a while, <coughs> when the Andy Griffith Show happens to be on TV, I'll sit and watch an episode of it. It's kind of cute, you know. Interesting throwback thing. Uh, this is another, one of the, another pretty good score. This was actually from the House of Records. The Almost Famous soundtrack. One of my absolute favorite music-related movies. For some reason, I just never picked up the soundtrack. So, and it's kind of funny because sometimes that happens that watching the movie is enough, you know, that I don't really need the soundtrack for separate listening. And so I guess that's why sometimes I just never buy the soundtrack from a particular, particular movie. And sometimes it's the reason why I wait so long to pick it up until it's somewhere for available for a dollar. Then we have, I watched both of these movies recently and I picked up uh, the soundtrack from the first movie a while ago, Sister Act. Uh, yes, I just, yeah, like I said, a couple weeks ago, I watched the first movie, and then like a week later, I watched Sister Act 2. I had never never seen Sister Act 2 before. I had seen the original many years ago, back when it first came out. Forgotten what fun movies both of those were. So, yeah. Lots of very, very fun stuff to listen to. On the inspirational side, but then not really in-your-face gospel stuff, you know. And then here we have another a John Williams soundtrack, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of, of Azkaban. Uh, don't worry, J.K. Rowling didn't get a penny for this. Uh, and I, I'd forgotten that John Williams had written the music for more than just the first movie. So that's one reason why I picked this one up. Uh, you know, The first movie is pretty much enough Harry Potter music for me, but I just, for some reason, I've kind of been in a bit of a an itch to collect a few of the John Williams soundtracks I haven't, I didn't have yet. So I do want to get the uh, the soundtrack from the second one, Chamber of Secrets. Is that what it is? Uh, he wrote the music, but uh, a fair amount of it, and I'm not sure what the ratio is with the music that he wrote specific for the movie and what was adapted and conducted by this uh, other composer that uh, was also a part of the. He was also credited for the music. And here we have another John Williams uh, soundtrack. This is a classic. Cannot believe I found this at a thrift store. Jaws. One of the classics of John Williams. I never had the soundtrack before. I don't know why. Big John Williams fan. Just never had the soundtrack. 
and I've actually never seen the movie either. I know. Chastise me. Go ahead. Uh, but I, I'm just not much for the scary movies or the monster movies. You know, don't know why. Anyway, we have here we have a Jerry Goldsmith soundtrack. Looney Tunes back in action. Hey, again, it was it was there for a dollar, so why not? I this is yet another movie I have not seen. I love the Looney Tunes cartoons. I have three of the is it two DVD sets or is it more than two DVD sets? Three sets of the classic Looney Tunes cartoons. Love them. Will never outgrow them. Even when I'm 80, 85 years old, sitting in front of my DVD player, I will, I will be watching those and giggling at them. So I don't know why I have never seen this movie, but uh, I guess maybe I should. So yes, Jerry Goldsmith is another composer that I, I've uh, enjoyed several of his thing, uh, movies. And then we have a John Williams compilation. Well, sort of. Uh, yes, this is um, performed by Spectrum. So yes, this is primarily synthesized versions of John Williams' movie soundtrack hits. Why not? Uh, I mean, even even in synth versions, they're still pretty good. Except, oh, I, and I can't think of... I was listening to this the other day, and it has E.T. cited twice on here, track one and track five, but track five is not E.T. Track five is something else. I can't remember what it was. So they, they made a boo-boo and... Uh, Said that uh, E.T. was on here twice, but it's not. Uh, so anyway, that uh, mistake aside, it's a cute... It's fun to listen to, you know. Silly background music. I'll probably just keep it for the novelty more than anything else. And then I actually probably put should have put the Sister Act 2 soundtrack at the end of the soundtrack section because that's kind of gospelish, And we have another gospel thing. And this is, again, a two-disc set for a dollar. This was another House of Records find. Mahalia Jackson, uh, Gospel, Spirituals, and Hymns. Uh, I am not a gospel music person. I've, I've mentioned that before. I'm not religious, so the, the lyrics are lost on me. But what I've come to appreciate lately about gospel music, and especially about after listening to this one, is the passion and exuberance of the singer is undeniable when you listen to gospel music, the feeling behind it, even if you don't don't totally believe in the words, the feeling behind it is something that is pretty much unique to the gospel genre. So I'm, I'm probably going to always have some kind of gospel of some sort in my collection <clears throat> if I need something that's, you know, that's just upl uplifting. You know, it's, it's not preachy stuff. You don't have to take it as preachy stuff at least. You know, just listen to it for the inspirational value, the, as I said, the exuberance, the passion of it. If you need something to lift your spirits, it's, it's interesting what certain genres that you're not necessarily into could do to lift your spirits. And the last three CDs are actually holiday CDs that I picked up. Uh, first one is James Taylor, At Christmas. Uh, James Taylor's voice, let's face it, uh, you can't not like James Taylor's voice, really. I mean, I, I don't know if anybody who... If there's anybody out there that doesn't like James Taylor's voice, I, I question them. Anyway, <laughs> so yes, singing holiday songs can't get a whole lot better than that. And then uh, an artist I uh, showed toward the beginning of this one, Natalie Cole. Uh, I decided I had to pick up a holiday album by Natalie Cole. Holly and Ivy is the name of this one, so... I'm sure it's going to be good. And the final CD here, uh, this is one that I've had a, one or two different versions of, but, well, let me explain after I show you what it is. Merry Christmas by Bing Crosby. I had a CD for a while, for a few years now. It was called White Christmas. The same track listing, for some weird reason, somewhere along the line, they decided to change the name of the album to White Christmas instead of Merry Christmas. Sometimes I have a problem with when people, you know, make revisionist music history and rename a classic album. So I've been wanting, that's one reason why I bought this version of it, is I've been wanting to have the version that is called Merry Christmas, just because I'm kind of a purist in a musical historical sense like that. And I believe this is the original track listing. Uh, I'll have to look it up and make sure. 
but yes, that's what I what I like to have is the original name of the album and the original original track listing, as it was originally presented. So, uh, so yeah, the uh, the one that I had, the White Christmas, I believe it was also the the original track listing. It's just, it kind of was a, a thorn in my side that it was renamed White Christmas. No, it was called Merry Christmas. What's wrong with keeping it that title? Yes, he had a really, really huge, famous song called White Christmas. And maybe enough people who didn't know better were calling the album White Christmas when it was actually Merry Christmas. So that's why decided why they decided, okay, let's just change the name to that. I don't know. Anyway, that's just my theorizing. Anyway, that is my uh, St. Vinny's Thrift Store haul. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to have lots of fun... Uh, Oh, set that down carefully so I don't, without breaking my arm. Uh, I'm going to have lots of fun listening to all these CDs. It's probably going to take me two or three years, but I'm going to get through them, like it's taking me a long time to get through the backlog that I still have. I know. Crazy. What can I say? But uh, anyway, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, hit that bell icon so you don't miss future videos, and click my username to browse my past videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.